I'm Stephen Hicks. My guest this evening is Professor Jerry Kirkpatrick from California State Polytechnic University in Pomona. Uh, he's the author of a new book on Montessori Dewey and Capitalism. And uh, he tonight gave a lecture to the Philosophy of Education class here at Rockford College, sponsored by the, the Center for Ethics and Entrepreneurship on the themes of Montessori, Dewey, and, uh, and capitalism. Uh, Professor Kirkpatrick, both uh, Montessori and Dewey are, are known properly as modern and very progressive <coughs> educators, uh, and two of the giant names in philosophy of education and education practice in the 20th century. What uh, distinguishes them from the long line of traditional educational thinkers and practice over the course of you know, two millennia plus? Right, right. Uh, yeah, they, uh, um focus on uh, uh, concentrating on the child, the whole child, uh, not just uh, communicating a lot of information. Uh, they focus on trying to uh, develop the, the child's independence, uh, ability to think mm -hmm. for himself or herself, mm -hmm. uh, and have a, a good self-directed uh, kind of uh, uh, a life. Mm -hmm. uh, Montessori uses the term concentrated attention, where she uh, 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 it's her primary aim in education to get the child to concentrate for long periods of time, something that uh, will uh, increase as the years go by uh, to adulthood, which presumably would mm -hmm. be then a, a, a nice uh, productive career with strong concentration. Mm -hmm. John Dewey talks about undivided interest uh, in, in the sense that, first of all, we should have an interest in uh, uh, what we are studying and be able to choose what we uh, are learning, mm -hmm. as opposed to the traditional education that's been gone uh, been taught since at least ancient Greece, where basically you are just uh, uh, information is drilled into you, then mm. you must recite it back, and if you make a mistake, you might actually get hit mm. uh, or spanked or, or whatever. Um, the, uh, the it's, it's the modern progressive view of basically being nice to the child mm. and uh, understanding their emotions, uh, their um, desires, and uh, it, it letting them uh, pursue their own interests. Mm, I see. Well, let's say you do note that uh, Montessori and Dewey both are drawing on some historical figures yeah. in the tradition, not necessarily the dominant figures up until the modern time. Who who, who do you single out as the, the the major figures that both Montessori and uh, Dewey are drawing upon? Well, it, uh, there, there are uh, quite a few since uh, about a century before the Enlightenment, uh, but it even goes back to. Uh, uh, the Roman educator Quintilian in mm -hmm. the first century AD uh, was uh, uh, very concerned about his students and, and not having this uh, this harsh kind of uh, discipline. Mm -hmm. uh, he wrote a book. Uh, it was lost in the Middle Ages and then rediscovered in the uh, uh, Renaissance, which then influenced a number of other people. And we've got the, the Czech reformer Comenius. Uh, we have uh, 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 John Locke. Uh, we have Rousseau, who's mm -hmm. called the father of modern education because he focused on the concept of interest. The child should be able to pursue his or her own interests mm -hmm. and not just uh, be f forced into a situation right. like the traditional uh, teacher. Uh, there was a Swiss uh, uh, practitioner by the name of Pestalozzi, uh, had a number of schools. Uh, uh, Johann Friedrich Herbart, a uh, philosopher mm -hmm. at the University of Königsberg and actually successor to Kant, uh, coined the term pedagogy uh, or science of uh, learning or science mm -hmm. of teaching. Um, there was then uh, also uh, um, Friedrich Froebel, father of the, the kindergarten. Mm -hmm. And kindergarten means uh, garden for children, and uh, as opposed to a, uh, you know, a very uh, um, unfriendly kind of a you know, classroom type situation. Right. And he, his term kindergarten was supposed to apply all the way through education, mm -hmm. not just the, the Pre uh, first grade that we think of today, right? As you put it in class, a garden rather than a prison. Yes, right, right. <laughs> right. <laughs> the right place uh, for so uh, there is a definite tradition, and okay. uh, so I see Montessori and Dewey as the culmination of this okay. whole trend. Okay, uh, focus on a couple of the, the more uh, particular elements uh, of parallel for Montessori. The, the phrase is concentrated attention. Mm -hmm. For Dewey, it's undivided, I don't remember the, the interest. Tank, undivided, undivided interest, interest okay, yeah. good. Yeah. And both of them independently are uh, focusing on this as a, as a central part of education, right. and, and in your judgment, it amounts to the same thing with different labels. Yeah, yeah, very similar, because uh, 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 with, with Montessori, you want the child to learn how to concentrate for long periods of time. She mm -hmm. developed these unique and very clever, uh, she calls them didactic materials, mm -hmm. that the child works with. Uh, and uh, if they can, you can encourage the concentration, it relaxes them, 
uh, many problems uh, just kind of fade away. Mm. Uh, Dewey uh, is talking about uh, you know, traditional classroom where the child is bored, uh, starts daydreaming. The interest, in other words, is divided, <coughs> and uh, it uh, uh, breeds dependence. Mm. Uh, and uh, uh, it becomes very discouraging to the child. And so, and so for both the, job, the primary job of the teacher is to set the right conditions for the child right. to get into the state of undivided att right. attention, right? Okay. Right. Montessori calls it a prepared environment, um, and uh, Dewey just says the, the, the teacher needs to develop certain experiences that right. will, will encourage this. And then the uh, educational outcome, the primary one, is that then the student uh, cultivates uh, independent judgment. And so in both right. cases, the teacher is a facilitator right. of the environment, yeah. so the student concentrates and then achieves yeah. the yeah. ability. Now, yeah. I, I'm actually, I, I think I'm extending this a bit to talk about it as independent judgment. Uh, Montessori calls it independence, and Dewey is, calls it, they don't really define it as, as specifically as I do. Um, I because I, uh, I think most people think of independence as you become an adult and you can pay your bills mm -hmm. uh, and pretty much like that have good sound judgment but independent judgment is, is going beyond that to uh, like the boy in the story of the emperor's new clothes uh, mm -hmm. when everyone else is, is uh, sitting idly by and ignoring it or denying it uh, the boy uh, uh, pipes up and says the emperor has no clothes on mm -hmm. he sees it he judges it and he also acts on it mm -hmm. um, I would say other parallels are the, the ability and willingness of uh, uh, revolutionary Americans to uh, go dump tea in Boston Harbor, oh, okay. having, having the guts to really do something that's not okay. necessarily popular. So the independence has both a, a cognitive component right. and an existential yeah. action component. Yeah, yeah. Right. Yeah. Uh, uh, you're stressing similarities between Montessori and Dewey, but through most of the 20th century, the perception has been very that, different. They, that they're right, that they're yeah. philosophically different, they bring great yeah. turf warfare issues. Yeah. Um, in your judgment, do you think that the differences are overstated or are they real? Well, they, they, they definitely are to some extent uh, uh, because the uh, throughout the, the 20th century, it was progressive educators, not just Dewey, and, and Dewey was kind of a, a little bit on the sidelines, being for most of his career as a, a professional philosopher, mm -hmm. and it was the people who were speaking for him or in his name. Uh, and I don't think they necessarily uh, uh, followed what he was saying uh, precisely. Um, <clears throat> but no, it's still true that, that uh, uh, Dewey advocated a more social orientation in his schools. He, he saw education as a tool of social policy uh, and uh, with a very significant political element. Mm. Montessori did not, and, but that, that's true of most of the European progressives. They did not have the strong political mm. element uh, to them, they they focused really down at the, cl the class level and helping the child uh, uh, become uh, independent and catering to their interests and individual differences. Right, and one of the things also you mentioned in your talk, but you develop further in your book, are the political and economic implications of these educational philosophies and and your extensions of them. Uh, you know, in emphasizing this point of finding one's own interest, uh, being able to uh, independently concentrate and work through various mm -hmm. projects, and then developing the independence right. of, of spirit, of mind, uh, and of action. Um, your argument then is that both Montessori and Dewey, whether they were aware of it or not, really were preparing students for a modern, free, entrepreneurial right, approach to society. Specifically capitalistic, yeah. I, I, okay. I, I do a real twist on these things because both Montessori and Dewey were, were really socialists. Sure. But uh, I take a look at the, their ideas and the whole uh, trend in the mm. progressive movement and. I saw what seemed like a contradiction to, uh, you know, let the child, uh, you know, the, the, there's what's called the organic metaphor, let the, the flower uh, blossom on its own, mm. let it be free to choose and, and move around the room, uh, yet the whole thing is going to be imposed mm. uh, by the state, which is a, a tool of coercion. Mm. So it's like, and with, especially with compulsory education, you're forcing children to be free, <laughs> in other words, uh, which is a contradiction. And I said, well, no. Uh, they're both talking about independence and uh, want the uh, children to grow up to be uh, strong, uh, uh, courageous uh, adults. That sounds just fine for capitalism. Mm -hmm. <coughs> and uh, so uh, I actually advocate then a, a, a free market in education, uh, removing uh, government completely from the whole uh, education process mm -hmm. and have entrepreneurial capitalists uh, providing the schools. Mm -hmm. So the argument that actually goes in, in two directions. One is if you take the underlying educational philosophy that both Montessori and Dewey are advocating, that prepares students best not for a more bureaucratic 
top-down socialist right. society. It prepares them for right. an entrepreneurial I, market society. That's what but I then, saw when I was, I was reading them. I right. But then, it and then also your argument that is if we want to actually institutionalize the kind of educational approach that Montessori and Dewey uh, are advocating, that is going to be best realized not by state-run bureaucratic right. institutions. Right. It'll be best uh, provided by entrepreneurial right. market right. approaches right. to education. Yeah. Okay. And, and, and the, both Dewey and uh, Montessori are talking about not interrupting the child, you know, undivided mm. interest, don't divide the interest. Montessori says it's very important not to interrupt the child, mm. don't deflect the attention. Well, I see the connection there also at the political level that uh, what government intrusion in the economy does is precisely that. Mm. It deflects attention of the entrepreneur and uh, uh, tries to move them in, in a direction that's away from what the real business of business is, and that's uh, satisfying customers. Mm. Right, or, de or developing the product. Developing uh, the product to right, satisfy the customers. And deflecting yeah. toward rule compliance and, yeah, and, and, right. and bureaucracy. Yeah. I see. Okay. All right, the book is called uh, Montessori, Dewey, and Capitalism by Jerry Kirkpatrick. Thanks for being with us today. Thank you.